How's it going guys? Welcome back to another Farming Simulator 19 how-to video. So, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up your steering wheel for Farming Simulator 19. And for the purposes of this video, I'm using my Logitech G29, but this should work fine for any other steering wheel. Your software might look a little bit different, but everything in-game should be exactly the same. So I have actually made a video like this a few years ago, but I decided to make an updated one for you guys. And we're going to try and get through this as quickly as possible. So we're going to look at the basic steering wheel settings. We are going to look at my in-game key mapping. So you can copy that if you want to. And then most importantly, we are going to look at dead zones. But before we get into all of that, if you find this video helpful, please remember to give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out. And I would love it if you would consider checking out some of my other content as well. But with that said, let's get straight into it. Right, so the first thing that you want to do is open up your steering wheel software. So again, I'm using a Logitech G29. If you are using a different brand of steering wheel, your software will look different to this. But the basic principle should remain. So we are going to go ahead and click on G29 and head over to steering wheel. And here you'll find the basic settings for your wheel. So first up is the operating range, which is the degrees of rotation of your steering wheel. The maximum for the G29 is 900. Again, yours might be different. And here you can adjust whatever range you feel like. And I run it at 900, which is maximum, just because that's what I enjoy doing. You might like it on a different range. So just play around with it and see what you like. Next up is sensitivity. I leave that at default 50. Again, you can play around with that and see if you might like a different value. But for me, 50 is absolutely fine. Now, centering spring strength is going to be another personal thing. I like to run it at 10 and you can run it as high or as low as you want to. You can even run it on zero if you want no resistance. So this is going to be the turning resistance on your wheel in game. For this to work, though, you'll have to have the centering spring in non-force feedback games turned on. From here, we'll head over to pedal sensitivity and you'll have some adjustments that you can make to your pedals over here. Again, I run everything on default, but you can play around with the values and see if you like something different. For the G29, the combined pedals needs to be unticked. But if you're running some different pedals or a different steering wheel pedal combo, then you might need to come in here and tick that if your pedals aren't working properly in game. Right, so that is it from the steering wheel settings itself. From here, we can head straight into the game. We'll head over to options. And then up here, we'll go to the key binding section and click on gamepad controls. So this might look a little bit overwhelming at first. This is simply because I have a few different controllers plugged into my PC. It's actually really simple. We're just looking for the G29 driving force racing mappings. So I'm going to run through all of my mappings really quickly. If I'm going too fast, you can pause the video if you want to map yours the same as mine. Or you can just go ahead and map it however you want. First up, we have enter vehicle on circle. Then we have switch to next and previous vehicle on the D-pad left and right. Open menu doesn't actually do anything. It says start, but there is no start button on G29. And this is in fact not mappable. So just go ahead and ignore that. Next up, we have Attach Tool and Select Tool on L2 and L3. Then we have the Engine Start Stop, which is on the Return button, which is the big round button within the red rotator on the bottom right of a G29. Then we have Toggle Light on Triangle, and we have the Turn Signals on the Paddle Shifts. Next up, we have the Lower Tool, Tool Functions, and Toggle Pipe, which is the Auger Pipe. And this I have mapped on my H shifter. So if you do have an H shifter, you can go ahead and utilize that. And it is actually quite handy. Next up, we have cruise control on R2. And from here, we can scroll all the way down until we find the brake, accelerate and steering. So this is all as you would expect, except for the brake. So I have my clutch pedal mapped to the brake. And this is because... In Farming Simulator, you use the same pedal for reversing as well. And it is quite difficult to press your brake pedal all the way down to reverse at full speed. I find it much easier to use the clutch pedal for this. You can use either one, whatever works for you. So that is it for the default mappings. 
but I do also have some mappings for the GPS mod. So if you are running the GPS mod, I'll show you how I have mine set up as well. So first up, we have the D-pad up, which is to toggle guidance steering. Then we have D-pad down for the menu. Then we have R3 for the actual activation of the guidance steering. And then we have up and down, which is the plus and minus buttons on the left bottom of the steering wheel on a G29 to move the track left and right. So last but definitely not least, we are going to click on this little button up here. And this is where we are going to change our dead zones. So very important, make sure that your device is in fact your steering wheel. If it isn't, you can click down here on switch device or use X on your keyboard to cycle through your devices. The default value on the dead zones is set at 14% and I just find that way too high. It is especially noticeable on the steering itself. My recommendation is to bring these values down to 2%. I wouldn't go any lower than that as this can sometimes cause problems where vehicles will reverse or drive by themselves without you actually touching any of the controls. And that brings us to the end of this video so I hope that you found it helpful. If you did please make sure to give me a thumbs up and I would really appreciate it if you would consider subscribing and checking out some of my other content as well. But that's it from me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.